So when I was thinking about faith, it made me think of every time I watch TV, guys. I'm not sure if you go through the same, the same thing, but every time I watch TV and I see someone doing something, I think, man, I can do that. There's always something I'm seeing on TV and I'm like, I can do that. Though whoever that person may be is well trained. Though they've been doing it for a very long time, I think I can do it and I think I can do it better than them. Mm. Do you guys, you guys, I'm sure you get, some of you guys get what I'm saying. Every time I see someone baking a cake, I think I can do that. Every time I see someone building a tree house, I may not have a tree in the boy back garden, but I think I can do that. Maybe in my little plant somebody has grown in our kitchen. Every time, every time I watch the rugby and I see these guys struggling to smash through the other team, I'm like, what's wrong with these guys? Yeah. I can do that. Give me the ball, put me on the pitch, give me some I'm gonna do it in my church shoes, I'm gonna run straight through those guys. Every time I look at someone like that, I think I can do it. Mm. To me, there is nothing extreme about extreme rock climbing. Mm. There is nothing extreme about extreme downhill boarding. In my head, I eat extreme for breakfast. Mm. Mm. That's how extreme I believe I can be. One of, the, uh, one of the things that I'm really convinced that I can do is drive. I think I can drive. Mm. I believe I can drive. I'm sure I can drive. Apart from the obvious world, uh, real world factors, I definitely believe that driving in video games readies you for driving in the real world. <laughs> they, they, they put so much into it. You got the gravity right there, you got cruise, you got the uh, uh, how the wheel feels when it starts shaking. I can't describe it, describe it uh, completely, but I'm sure those who drive get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the games, uh, it, the steering wheel does shake a bit what I learned yesterday. <laughs> so, you know, these days games are pretty realistic and but I'm just yet to persuade my wife, my friends and the law enforcement that it is actually possible for me to drive and I can use that. Mm. So, I would, I would say Sean, Pascal and myself have full faith that we can drive. Mm. We have absolutely okay, sure. full faith that we can drive. Okay. Pascal is probably going to try and hide it right now and say no, that's not me. He does too. <laughs> faith doesn't only make you confident though. Faith give faith uh, what's it? faith does not only allow me to allow me to be confident in my unseen ability to, to drive. Faith gives me confidence and assurance. As the Bible says in Hebrews chapter one, chapter eleven, uh, verse one. So Hebrews chapter eleven verse one it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. But faith applied brings victory. In Hebrews 11 verse 30, it says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell, after the army had marched around them for seven days. So this is a story where uh, Joshua is leading an army around this city called Jericho. And God gives them this crazy plan. Walk around the city seven times in the last day. After six days of previously walking around the city once. Mm. Sounds like a crazy plan. Sounds like a plan that goes against everything that we know of. Every bit of logic. Gravity. Uh, forces. How to actually lead an army. But with, faith, with their faith, the walls actually fell. It's because of faith that we move. It's because of faith that we fight. It's because of faith that we win. <laughs> faith is what gives a rugby team the strength to play in the World Cup. Faith in losing, in losing weight is what gives people the faith to go and diet and get a gym membership. Even greater faith is what gives a person the ability to use that gym membership. Yeah. But when there is no faith, we plateau. We fall and we lose the battle. We need to have faith. So today my sermon is Victory through faith. Oh, okay. My first point is don't let faith turn into expectation. Oh, okay. Faith is a great thing to have. I would even dare to say that faith is something that we all need to have. Yeah. What can we do without it? There are people that put their faith in fact. People that put their faith in chance. People that put that uh, people you can even put your faith in what you dream 
or your own personal experiences. A handful of a, hand, a handful of friends of uh, friends of mine and myself came to New Zealand because of our faith. We came to New Zealand on a plane of faith, and we landed with a confidence in what we hoped for, and an assurance in what we had yet to see. To do this, they left everything they had behind in Sydney, in America, for me, in London. These 10 missionaries had to forget everything they once had, everything they had once worked for, the friends that they had gained. They did this, they, they, had, they did this so that they could take hold of something that they could not yet see. They had to give up everything and with faith, they had to go, it was only with faith that they went up there to try and gain something that only with faith they were able to see. If that's not great faith, then I don't know what is. However, though faith may seem strong at the present moment in time, strength is seen in endurance. As one of those missionaries, I began to expect God to, re to reward me, to reward my actions. No longer had the, had the faith that uh, that I had pleased that pleased him. With, uh, no longer did I act on the, on the faith that I had, and expect him to reward me with that faith. But I wanted him to reward me on what I thought my actions deserved. Mm -hmm. My focus was no longer on God, but it was on my own life. We see an example of this in, in Haggai chapter one, from verse two to eleven. It reads. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in panel houses while the house remain, while this house remains in ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have, pl you have planted much but harvest little. You eat but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are never, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them into purses with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says: Give careful thought to your ways. Give, give up, go up into the mountains, and bring down timber, and build my house, so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored. Says the Lord. You expect much, but see. It turned out to be little. What you brought home, I have no way. Why? Because the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains in ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of, because of you, he the heavens have withheld their dough. The earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces. No people, uh, on people and livestock, and stock, and all who labor, and all the labor of your hand. Don't let your faith turn into expectation. These Israelites had just been led out of Babylon, which was now no longer Babylon, but was overtaken by Persia. They led out all the people who Babylon had taken, who had, uh, Babylon had taken prison. Uh, hostage and let them go back to their land. So these people had actually gone back to their homeland. A land where God had looked after them. A land where they had joy because of the faith that they had in God looking after them. A land where they once had faith that God was providing for them with food. They ate in the, they ate in the land that He had given to them. Though now they worked the land and expected the same results without involving God. They once had faith in the security that God brought to the people. So now, they built their homes and worked for money with the expectation of safety in all these without involving God. This, had been us, this has been us in many, many different areas of our lives. I think of a baby. I'm sure no one's ever seen a baby come home and go, oh, I'm not sure if my mom's going to provide for me today. I better go get a job at Starbucks so I can get some milk. <laughs> That's not a baby. 
I'm sure no one's ever seen a baby come home and say, hey, my dad might not clothe me in my, in my bed, in my uh, pajamas, so I better go to cotton on and buy some pajamas. It's not a baby. A baby has faith in their parents. But when you were a teenager, that was when things were different. You no longer wanted to involve your parents into their lives. You doubted most of what your parents even said. What they say probably wasn't true to you when you were a teenager. But you still expected food on the table and money in your piggy bank, but didn't want them involved in your lives. We've all experienced something like this. These people no longer had faith. They had an expectation for God's son. Choked up by life. In Matthew 13, verse 30, 22, it says, The seed fell among the thorns. Uh, the thorns refers to someone who hears the word. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth chokes the word, making it unfruitful. Their faith had turned into expectation. Their focus on their own living, on how they lived, was their main priority. They had not wanted to start repairing the house of God before repairing their own house. They were thinking about themselves. Being choked up by worries of life doesn't only refer to the problems in life. We can sometimes get that mistake. Uh, troubles and challenges are coming. That, those there are the worries of life. Well, actually, the worries of life can also refer to the good things in life. Just not wanting to lose it. You have a great job. You don't want to lose it. You have great friends. You don't want to lose it. You have great opportunities in life, in university, you don't want to lose it. You want good grades, you don't want to lose it. You can be choked up by these things also. Over the past few months, I've seen this happen to myself as well. I've seen my faith turn into expectation. As I go out on campus, I've worked hard to meet as many people as I could. I worked hard to make as many friends as I could. I worked hard to talk to as many people as I could. There are some times when I'm walking down the street and I'm trying to hide myself because I've spoken to like five people and I don't want to stop and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I've worked so hard trying to get to know people. I talk to the shopkeepers. My, one of my best friends is the, uh, my what was it? caretaker of my, of my building. He stops me every morning to come and speak Spanish to me and every night to speak Spanish to me. Mama. Sometimes we spend a bit too long uh, speaking Spanish. <laughs> well, him speaking Spanish and me speaking English and saying, what's that? Uh, <laughs> I, I've worked so, I work so hard. But in that time, I didn't have faith that God would reward my work. Mm -hmm. I had an expectation for God to reward my work. Mm -hmm. I said, hey God, look at what I'm doing. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you making me fruitful? Why aren't you giving, why aren't you giving me greater opportunities? Why aren't you helping me out? I then began to expect God to reward me with these things. I focused on my own life and I focused on myself. My, I focused on pride. I even was choked up with life. My focus was me, 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 me. When I wasn't working hard and expecting God to reward me for that, I was focused on myself and not focused on anything else. Helping people had actually become a job. It actually became a job in my life. My main focus was me, trying to be a good husband. Thinking, oh, I need to do this, right? I need to do this, I can't upset my wife. Uh, you go, I need to focus on my wife. I focused on my own fitness, on my own body, on how I looked. My, my mind was just focused on me. I focused on all these things and no longer had any faith in God. And because of that, there wasn't much of a victory in my life, no matter how many people I knew. It didn't matter who I spoke to, there was hardly a victory at all. But when we put God first, when we trust in Him, when we rely on Him, we have, and we have, we have faith in Him, God will always pull through. If you check out Joshua chapter 8, verse 18, it Congress. says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Hold outward, oh, sorry, hold out, towards Ai, the javelin that is in your hand. For into your hand I will deliver the city. So Joshua held up, held up towards the city, the javelin that was in his hand. As soon as he did this, the men in the ambush rose quickly from their position, rushed uh, and rushed uh, forward. They entered the city and captured it, and quickly set it on fire. When we trust in God, there is a victory. 
when we give our all to God, there is victory. When we stop expe having expectations of God there, and have faith in God, there is a victory. There is no greater victory than the victory that is found when we put our faith in the Lord. Come on. When we give ourselves completely to God, there is a victory in our lives. We get to make cool friends, kind of like our friend Amos here. Amos. Everyone's met Amos. He's, he's a cool guy. We actually get to make proper friendships because we actually have faith in what God's going to do. My challenge for you is to stop expecting God to serve you. If you have an expectation, stop expecting God to serve you. Stop expecting Him to resolve you with this or give you, uh, reward you with this or with that. And begin asking God for help. Asking Him to, to, to look at what you're doing, teach you to make it better and work hard. My point number two is how much faith do you have? Come on, Chris. Hate to point it out, hate to point out the obvious, but to show that I know a bit about cars, did you know that cars need fuel to run? Oh. 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 There we go. There we go. Cars need fuel to run. And in the same way, we all need faith. Yeah. Without faith, there's no movement in our life. Yeah. There's no growth, there's no change in how we live. We're stuck with the same challenges. Mm. You're going nowhere. Without faith, you see no need to go anywhere. You see no need to go. Life becomes a drag. Yeah. But faith is the fuel and we need it. There are times when we feel like nothing is possible. There's no way anything can happen. No way anything can change. There's no way Scotland can come up against Ireland. Oh. Well, that's a bit different. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but there are also times when we feel like nothing is impossible. Where you can do absolutely anything. I eat extreme for breakfast. Oh <laughs> those, are, those are the times I feel like that. What's the difference? Just a small bit of faith. Yeah. Doesn't matter how much it is. Even Jesus says it. In Matthew chapter 17, from verse 19, it says, Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive, drive it out? Talking about an evil, uh, uh, evil demon that was in the small boy. And he replied, because you have so little faith. Yeah. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, you can say it to Mount Mar uh, Albert right there, <laughs> move from here to there and it will move. Mm -hmm. Nothing will be impossible for you. We all know the story of the demon possessed boy. The disciples had actually gone round and healed and cast out demons and taught before this, which is the reason why the father would actually bring his or his son to the disciples also. The fa father brings his son to them because Jesus' disciples had gone out and done all this. They had cast out demons. But I really wonder what was the difference with this young boy? What was different about this boy that made it impossible for them to do the same thing that they had already been doing. Mm -hmm. What was different about this boy that made them lose faith? What was different about the condition of this boy that made them need more faith? They, they saw the boy, they saw the situation he was in, and suddenly their faith was not enough. All a person needs to do big things. Mm -hmm. Jesus told them, told them, uh, told them this. Even if their faith was as small as a mustard seed, they can move mountains. How much less did their faith amount up to for them to be unsuccessful, if not no faith at all? What does your faith amount to? How much faith do you have? It takes a little effort to produce a little faith, to produce a little bit of faith, but great results create tons of faith. Mm. Before I, became a, before I became a Christian, I would actually tell myself my life was worthless. My life didn't mean much. Uh, this was before I started trying to find my, wealth, my, my worth in the relationships I was, with, I was in and how much money I could actually make. I didn't like my life. I, I remember always um, getting into a time where I just didn't want to, to be around anymore. I didn't want to be alive anymore because I felt as though I was a burden on my family. Uh, I spent many nights staying in my room because I didn't think I could 
be with my family because I'll just bring them upset. Uh, there are many times where I'll jump up onto my window ledge and I, and I would look down and I would want to jump down. There was actually one time I, I found the blade in my bedroom. Uh, it was on my windowsill. I'm not sure where. One of my sisters might have also forgotten it there because I like to sew and stuff. Uh, I think I was about 13 or 14 because it was before I left my parents' house when I was 15. Uh, it must have been summer because I was walking around about a top on. And I saw this blade there and a weird thought came into my head. I actually thought of cutting myself. And what I really wanted to cut was my belly because I was a bit chubby. And it, was, it was something that I just hated. And the weird thing is I actually started to do it. Though the moment I saw the blood, I got scared and I ran up to my parents with some sort of lie to tell them about how it happened. Must, I think I told them it was on the window ledge and I went like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that, that was what happened. But I think every single time when I actually wanted to, to, to jump out my window or, or just not live, what always uh, helped me was thinking about my father. Thinking about a sentence that my, uh, my father did, exactly what he said, but I was always shown him what he did. Um, I always thought I was more burdened than worth to my father. But in everything he did, he showed love. Mm -hmm. Even though it may have not seemed, seemed like that at the time, like we need to call in my toys. <laughs> everything he did actually showed love. And just remembering my, my father's love for me gave me the faith that there is some value in my life. That there on, is something Chris. in my life that is worth living for. Come on, Chris. Even if it's just my father's joy. We all need to refuel our faith. Yeah. We all need to build our faith up. Come on, honey. The scriptures actually say in Romans verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 11, Consequently, uh, faith comes from hearing the message. Mm. And the message is heard through the, uh, through the word about Jesus. You need the word of God. Everyone needs the word of God. If you're struggling in your faith, you need the Word of God. Nowhere can you ever find a book that will give you more faith than the Word of God. Yeah. In fact, nowhere can you ever find a book. Nowhere can you ever find a book that takes less faith to believe in and actually gives you more faith. Wow. Mirani will tell you many times. She'll be happy to tell you. It takes more faith to believe in all the theoretical talk among unbelieving scientists than anything else. It takes more faith to believe in a big bang, multiverse, uh, uh, there's different types of multiverses out there. It takes more faith to believe in evolution. It takes more faith to believe that we started evolving from a volcano at the bottom of the ocean with some rocks and some other little things. It takes more faith to believe in that than it does anything else. Yeah. And it gives you no faith at all in your life. Yeah. It just tells you you may be the lowest species and you may die. <laughs> so it tells you. It tells you white people are superior. No, God tells you everyone is equal and everyone yeah. is powerful when you have faith in them. If you want to make a change in your life today, you need to start reading and studying your Bible. Mm -hmm. If you want to make a difference in your life. Hold to the scriptures that are going to strengthen you. I've got a couple here. Here's one that's all over Facebook. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. I can do all things through, uh, through him who gives me strength. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or, ter or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or nor forsake you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 No temptation has overtaken you that is, uh, that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. There's nothing you can't face. I actually found all of these on Google. These were the first few scriptures I, I copied and pasted. Just looking at encouraging scriptures on Google. Mm. If we actually took these scriptures, took them, said them to ourselves over and over each day, if you put your faith in one of these and act on it, you'll see a change in your life. Yeah. You'll see a difference in your life. You'll be able to change your life in many different ways. Yeah. For those who need strength, for those who need courage, those fighting temptations, those looking to be fruitful, what you hear and what you tell yourself will either propel you or act as a rock around your leg. 
What do you really want? Do you want to be propelled? Do you want to rock around your neck? What you hear and what you tell yourself. What are you, what are you saying to yourself today? Are you gaining victory? Each morning, Mirani and I, we actually go, by at 6 o'clock we're in the gym and we're working out. We're working out as hard as we can. Now Mirani will tell you how much I love the gym. <laughs> She'll tell you I love it so much. She's going to the gym today and I'm kind of jealous. She'll tell you how much I love the gym. But she'll also tell you how much I complain when I get to the gym. I complain the whole time I'm there. I, I'm, I'm upset. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go home. I miss my bed. Why can't I just eat some eggs and make games? She'll, she'll tell you all about that. She, usually she's the one going, come on, Chris. And just before we leave to go to the gym, I'm going, come on, Milani. <laughs> she, she's that one. But when I sit on that bench and I have weights in my hands, I don't know if I can actually lift this. I love going to the gym because I love lifting, lifting heavy. Mm. But when I have those weights in my hand, it's unbelievable whether or not I can do it. It's unbelievable whether or not I can push it. But I tell myself I can. I tell myself it's possible. Sometimes I even have a little prayer. And the more and more I do it, is the is more and more I'm able to do it. Yeah. Are you being convinced by what you tell yourself out of faithlessness? Or are you trying to be convinced by God? Some of you came to change your life. Have faith in change. Some of you came to be fruitful. Have faith in fruitfulness. Yeah. And you can gain victory. Just have faith. My challenge for you today is study up your Bible in a way that gives you faith. And you'll see victory in that. In conclusion, don't let your faith turn into expectation. Don't expect God to serve you. Don't expect your, what you don't think of what you're doing to be higher than what God's ever done for you. Mm -hmm. See what God has already done for you in your life. Mm -hmm. How much faith do you have? Give yourself more faith. Build up in your faith. And with that, to God be the glory. Come on.